This week, I'm turning 27 pounds of apples into some hopped up hard cider. These days, craft cider's everywhere and the variety is out of this world. Barrel-aged cider, wild cider, fruited cider, the options are limitless. I'm aiming for a dry cider packed with hoppy flavors. And for the second year in a row, I'll be using home-pressed apple juice to get there. It's become somewhat of an annual tradition for my girlfriend Meg and I to go apple picking in the fall. And last year, I used some of those apples to make my first home-pressed hard cider. Unfortunately, a late freeze damaged much of the apple crop here in Colorado this year, and when we visited our favorite U-Pick orchard, they didn't have any tart apples for us to take home. Luckily, while visiting family in Ohio a few weeks ago, we were able to snag three different varieties of apples that are just what we need. Now, let's make some cider. In order to extract the juice from our apples, we first need to get them into smaller pieces. You can make quick work of this using a fruit crusher or an apple grinder, but I don't have any of that. Instead, we'll be making do with this Vitamix. I think the first thing we should do is quarter these apples so they're easier to fit into the Vitamix, then we'll see if we can grind them up. Well, shit. Um, maybe we need to cut them up a little smaller. Okay, yes. All right, this is gonna work fine. Meg's gonna cut each apple into about 16 pieces and I'll keep jamming them into the Vitamix until all the apples are ground. Let's do this. All the apples, stems, and seeds are basically applesauce at this point, and it's time for the next step of the process. After cleaning this little fruit press, we're adding a mesh bag and the apple puree. Now, all I need to do is add some wood blocks to the top and start pressing in batches until we've extracted all of the juice. We had a little squeeze out on the first round, so we ended up switching to a finer mesh bag and some cheesecloth. But it worked like a charm. On to the next step. collected about two gallons of juice from our apples and my plan is to heat pasteurize the juice to kill any wild yeast or bacteria that might be in there and I'll also add some hops. At this volume, this would work just as well on a stovetop if you don't have something like this. While we make our way up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit or about 77 degrees Celsius, I need to head inside and take care of a beer I made a while back. Let's check it out. In episode 11, I made a barley wine that ended up hanging out in a little oak barrel before eventually making its way into my kegerator. 
While I've enjoyed having a couple glasses of this over the last few weeks, I don't think I'll kick this keg anytime soon. So to make room for something else, I'm gonna bottle this thing up using the Blickman beer gun. I've got gas running from a manifold to both the keg and the bottom of the beer gun at about six PSI, and I have the liquid line running from the keg to the top of the beer gun. After a quick test, I think I'm ready to fill some bottles. The top lever purges the bottle of oxygen by releasing some CO2, and then the trigger fills the bottle from the bottom. According to the instructions, you should fill each bottle until liquid spills from the top. Once you remove the beer gun, you're left with a perfectly filled bottle. Then, all I need to do is shuffle down to my capping station and slam a cap on. For that, I'm using the Anvil bottle capper and man, what an upgrade from the double lever hand capper I'm used to. Just toss the sanitized cap into the bell, place the bottle underneath, and give that lever hell. After a quick dunk in some star sand, it's on to the next one. I'm gonna wrap this up and I'll meet you back in the garage. We're up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm using a clamp-on Whirlpool arm and my Blickman Riptide pump to essentially stir the wort. Now for some hops. Here's 14 grams of Falconer's Flight, 14 grams of Citra, and one ounce of Galaxy. I'm also adding one Whirlflock tablet. Now I'll just let this Whirlpool for about 30 minutes and then chill the cider down to pitching temperature. We're down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or about 21 degrees Celsius, and I'm aerating the cider with the Anvil oxygenation wand to get the yeast nice and stoked. For this cider, I'm using WLP715, which has a pretty neutral character, and I'm still debating if I should throw something funky into the mix after a few weeks of fermentation. More to come. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.